Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you and you are the lost children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those who call us to welcome, accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Let us sing together our opening hymn, hymn number 413. Reading. 
The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8 and 9 through 13. Through a vision in the temple, the 8th century prophet Isaiah is called by God to announce judgment against Israel. Aware of his sinfulness and shortcomings, Isaiah is initially hesitant. But when God calls, Isaiah responds, Here am I, send me. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull, and stop their eyes, ears, and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away, and the vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak, whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. Thank you. You'll join me in reading Psalm 138 responsibly. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, my whole heart. Lord of the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name in your word of all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord. For they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord. How great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly. Receiving the body from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the words of your and the second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Paul delivers in a nutshell the story of the gospel that was given to him. In the lineage of the Christian faith, we have received the good news of God's love from generations of believers before us. And we continue to tell this story to the world. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of the first importance, what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to the Cephas, then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the apostles, 
<clears throat> but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that, it, that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord.
yours is bigger, okay. Whatever job you choose, when you grow up, you can still follow Jesus. The, the disciples were fishermen. They never stopped fishing. There's other times in the Bible after they started following Jesus where they kept doing fishing. Because fishing provided them with food and they knew how to sail so it helped them get places. Whatever job you want to pick when you grow up, you can still follow and serve Jesus. So as you think about whatever job you might want to do when you grow up, whether that's farming, racing snowmobiles. I have a snowmobile. You have a snowmobile? Whether that's racing horses or... I don't even have a horse. You don't. Olivia on the other side has, has a horse. Or maybe you want to be a teacher like your mom. Absolutely not okay. <laughs> you can do whatever job and still follow Jesus and serve Jesus. So, I want you to run back to your seats. And we're going to keep serving Jesus and following God by worshiping together. Can you go that way? Hatley, can you go that way? don't know what you want to be when you grow up, you still can follow God. <clears throat> throughout the Bible, throughout all of our lives, we know that we are called to serve God. As Lutherans, we might not be very good about sharing our stories, how God called us to serve, but there are stories to share about being called to serve God. They don't have to be these crazy divine experiences, the mountaintop experience of our life that God called us in this exact moment, this crazy moment. They can be the small moments. Also, many call stories of being called to serve God have started out, at least I've heard them started out with, I was running away from insert God, church, etc. And God pulled me back in. Your call story does not have to fit a prescription. Isaiah's call story is a small intimate moment as that Isaiah is called into God's presence and experiences God's holiness. Paul's divine experience of conversion on the roadside comes with Christ calling him out for his bad behavior, blinding him, and sending him on a mission towards redemption. And the disciples, they are called in their everyday life. Fishing on the lake, Simon, James, and John were part of the family business. They were making their livelihood. They were on the lake that day to work. Jesus' soon-to-be disciples weren't there because they were looking for him or had the possibility to encounter him. They did not follow the crowds. No, they were on the lake doing their job, supporting the family business. They spent all night fishing with no luck and had a day without profit. Along comes Jesus and he borrows Simon's boat. And as the crowd is crushing in on Jesus, and as they follow him all the way to the lake, he takes a boat out to teach from it and to be in front of the whole crowd. And Simon just lets him buy on this boat, not knowing who he is, but that he has a great crowd following him. When Jesus finished teaching, he instructed Simon to go out farther, deeper into the water, and put down the nets again. And even though they were tired from a working a day's worth of work, Simon acknowledged the reality. They hadn't caught anything, and yet still listened to Jesus after hearing him teach. And they caught an abundant amount of fish. Such an abundance, it overwhelmed their capabilities to bring it into their haul into land. 
Recognizing the abundance, Simon acknowledges that he recognizes who Jesus is. In their amazement of abundance, Jesus had brought to their business. Jesus calls them to come and follow him. And Simon, James, John leave behind a business, a stable living, economic prosperity, an easier life. Not an easy life, but an easier life. As fishermen, they have the best day of work they've ever had in their careers, their lives perhaps on anyone's life, that they were there. And yet they abandoned it all to follow Jesus. They don't profit from all the fish that they caught, but they do leave it behind for their father, Zebedee, and their family business to prosper. Like a match, the abundance of fish ignites amazement. Amazement of an astonishing act leads to recognition. Recognition of who Jesus is leads to an explosive commitment called discipleship. Out of the everyday life of the disciples, we're called to follow Jesus. They rely on their past job experience throughout their life of discipleship of Jesus. Trusting in their ability to sail, they moved about the region. They even learned about walking on water and believing in Christ. And they continued fishing to feed themselves. Post-resurrection, Jesus appears to the disciples on the beach, sits down, and eats their catch of fish with them. While the disciples walk the journey of discipleship with Jesus, they don't change their life around because of a dramatic, life-changing, life-saving encounter. God called a person of unclean lips, a former persecutor of the church of God and three fishermen who couldn't catch a thing. More surprising still, perhaps, is that we're also called. Jesus meets us on the shorelines of our own lives, going about our daily work, and calls us to a lifelong discipleship. Called up, caught up in God's abundant grace and fed out of the bounty, we are commissioned to go and catch others. For some of us, we are commissioned to go out into the profession that we already work in, a family business, the farm, or we, where we found a passion to work, business, banking, teaching, nursing, and many other areas. Hearing the good news of Jesus as our Savior, we should respond like Isaiah saying, Here I am, Lord, send me. Despite our own feelings of unworthiness, despite our need for repentance, despite our role in the community. Whatever profession or lack of profession, we are still commissioned to go out fish for people. That fishing for people looks like sharing the good news, but also being Christ within the community. And that can work look a variety of ways in whatever our profession is. For teachers, it looks like recognizing signs and responding to signs of children in need. For nursing, it looks like being the caregivers. For those working in business, it means being a model of what a Christ-filled business looks like in the community, being fair, with wages and prices, doing good work. For banking, it looks like being fair and equitable. A random fact that I learned while going to a forum on dementia and Alzheimer's is that the first people, some of the first people to recognize signs of Alzheimer's and dementia are bankers. If that isn't a sign where you need to take Christ into your work, then you're missing an opportunity to serve and love your neighbors. There can be sign after sign. Farmers, as you are called to care for your animals and crop, you are the first on the line for stewardship, for caring for creation in your area, for protecting the waterways, for caring for the animals on your care and those surrounding your field. 
even when we feel unworthy and that Christ is not in our jobs, despite our need for repentance and whatever role we take, God is calling us to fish for people, to share the good news through loving God and our neighbor, in our homes, our communities, our careers, and throughout the world. Perhaps a bad way to end a sermon up here, but I'll end it this way. Let's go fishing. Amen. Let us sing together our hymn of the day. Shout out to Sharon. Here we go. Here's one of your favorite hymns. We throw out sometimes favorite hymns if we know it's your favorite hymn. Whenever it comes up in the lectionary, we have no problem singing it. <laughs> so hymn number 817. <laughs>
we do believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God to God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead. And the life of the world to come. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Holy Lord, equip your church to proclaim the good news that we have first received, the forgiveness and grace shown to us through Jesus Christ. Send us out as apostles, sharing the hope of your salvation with the waiting world. God of grace. Lord, soften the hearts of rulers and governments that they perceived and tend to the needs of their people. Remove corruption and the impulse towards violence. Protect first responders and military personnel who risk their lives in service of others. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Your steadfast love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon those who look to you for hope and healing. Bless doctors, nurses, social workers, therapists, and all caregivers. Draw near to those who are scared, sick, or in pain. We lift up to you those we call and name out in our own community. For Jerry, Brent, Lisa, Sheila, Mark, Roberta, Lucy, Jerome, Marilee and others that are on our hearts, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Lord, the disciples received help from partners as they brought in an abundant catch of fish. So strengthen this congregation's partnerships with community organizations and ministries near and far, both those within our own congregation community and those nationally and internationally. Multiply our shared efforts and bring joy to our relationships. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also and with you. Share a sign of peace with your neighbor, but don't share the flu. Again, the flu is still going around. <laughs> Uh, peace be with you to those who worship online. If you are sick in your home, we pray that you get well and that you to receive God's peace. It is well. You're going to these guys keep sitting down anyway, so you can sit down, and then I'm going to make you stand back up in a second. We would love for you to share special music during our offering time. If you have some special music in uh, uh, any way, even if you are singing Jesus Love Me, Hallie, if you're singing Jesus Loves Me, solo it out. We would love for you to share that during offering time. We would be so blessed with your gifts. Please join me in our offering prayer. Blessed are you, O oh God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with your heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our Lord, Amen. Can I still do a solo? Okay. Let's sing together. 
Christ is located at the back of our sanctuary. And if you are one of those people who forget the offering in your pocket, there is the drop box outside the church office door. Please stand as we come together, as we recognize the table that is set before us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And we look with his hope for his coming. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, the power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Those assisting with communion may come during the Lamb of God. All are welcome at our table. If you believe Jesus Christ died for your sins and rose from the grave, you are welcome at this table. <laughs>
we lift up this prayer, we give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive this blessing. God who leads you in the pathway to righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Let us stand and sing our sending hymn, hymn number 574. <laughs>
into a weary world, share the good news. Thanks be to God. Amen.